found its groove. The Terriers have won seven in a row and worked their way into second place in the conference standings. Leading their reemergence as one of the NEC's elite teams is the player of the week, the always exciting Richie Dominguez. If St. Francis is to score its eighth consecutive victory, they'll need to get past today's opponent, the UMBC Retrievers. The defending conference champions, paced by Terrence Ward, one of the league's best guards. It's a guaranteed dog-eat-dog -dog battle between the Terriers and Retrievers next. seconds to tip off from the Rack Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. It's the NEC Game of the Week. The St. Francis Terriers go against the UMBC Retrievers. And good afternoon, everybody. Bill Duffy along with Brad Greenberg and Tim Capstro bringing you the NEC Game of the Week. Brad, a big one here. UMBC underman. Got to contain a red-hot St. Francis team. UMBC's 2-3 zone must contain the quickness of St. Francis, and Terrence Ward has to be aggressive against the pressure defense of the Terriers. Let's get right to those starting lineups for St. Francis. Richie Dominguez is averaging over 25 points and nine rebounds in his last three outings. Ron Gagnon, the head coach of the Terriers for the UMBC Retrievers. Terrence Ward leads UMBC in scoring and is one of the NEC's best shooters. And the Retrievers, their head coach in his fifth year at the helm with a 52 and 80 mark, Tom Sullivan, former assistant of P.J. Carlissimo at Seton Hall University. Well, the table is all set. Take a look at your officials for today's game. George Watts from Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. George Harry from Metuchen, New Jersey. And Guy Pagano from Waldwick, New Jersey. That is your three-man crew for today's contest. Brad, I'm all excited. I'm ready to go. This was a big game between these two last year. These two teams fought hard last season. They are good teams again this year. St. Francis is on a roll coming into this ball game, and it's a key home contest for UMBC. And it is St. Francis with the ball. That is their very talented point guard, Greg Nunn, leads this conference in assists. Now driving and putting it on the floor, Stephen Howard fights, gets his own rebound, so they'll reset the offense. Santana, he can do damage from long range. Player of the week, Richie Dominguez in the lane, but he's stripped. Ball knocked away by Isaac Green, and Okafer is rejected at the other end by Hayward Rays. Now Howard pulls up, hits the jumper, and it is St. Francis with the early 3-0 lead. St. Francis will look to run at every opportunity. UMBC wants to slow this game down just a bit. Patient offense here by the Retrievers. Working down low, Isaac Green, and he's fouled on the play. And let's go to our sideline reporter, Tim Capstro. Yeah, Bill, talking with uh, Coach Tom Sullivan about before the game, he mentioned that he's had to back off his signature man-to-man -man defense this year and play much more zone, a lot of 2-3, a lot of 1-3-1. The depleted roster has forced him to do this. Now, they're playing solid defense, but they're not nearly as intimidating as last year. Richie Dominguez with the foul on Isaac Green. Green at the line, a 47% free throw shooter. You know, Bill, Tim's point is, is terrific. It's not the man-to-man -man aggressive defense that takes you out for UMBC this year. More of a setback, 2-3 zone, a little 1-3-1. One, they really try to keep the quickness of St. Francis on the perimeter. Howard with the turnaround. He hits this two-point basket. It's a 5-1 lead. All the points for Stephen Howard. Pressure on the inbound. None knocked it away but can't control. So it'll come back to the UMBC Retrievers. St. Francis, 94 feet pressure for just about 40 minutes a night. 
Puts a lot of heat on Terrence Ward. Got to have a lot of stamina to attack this press and try to be a guy who puts 20 points up on the board for UNBC to stay in this ballgame. Obviously, another key is to get the ball in the hands of Kennedy Okafer. This is Isaac Green pulling it out. It's Okafer driving now on Reyes. Gets it back out to the corner. Shot by Justin Wilson, no good. But Okafer with the rebound, and he's fouled again. No, sir. Oh, my God. Richie Dominguez reaching in, getting called for the foul. That's two very quick fouls on a key player on this St. Francis team. It sure is. Not the way Ron Gandolin wanted to start this ball game off. Dominguez emerging as one of the premier players in the conference, one of the best all-round players. And he is now saddled with two fouls less than two minutes into this ball game. Okafer, solid free throw shooter at 71%. Of course, he would miss the front end. Now, we've talked about already about UMBC doing things that they don't necessarily like to do. Well, if uh, Dominguez has to sit down for any extended stretch, this could change the game plan for St. Francis significantly. It would put an awful lot of pressure on Henry Lilani to come off and the bench and get going offensively. Howard with the hot hand early. Kicks it over to Santana. UMBC playing man-to-man -man these first couple of possessions, but expect them in his own shortly. Howard can't hit from the left side with the three ball. Just underway, only 5-2 lead for St. Francis. Terrence Ward hits the three ball, and we're all tied up at five. I love the way this guy shoots the basketball. Textbook form, great release, soft finish. And Dominguez working on Isaac Green. Turnaround, no good. Rebound pulled down by Okafer. Howard battles him for it, and Okafer keeps control. Good look down low, left-handed layup, no good, but the tip back by Brad Martin is good. Brad Martin finishing off the play on the second attempt. Terrence Ward doesn't get the assist, but he made a pretty bounce pass through the lane. Now Nunn drives into the lane, kicks it back to Santana. His jumper misses the mark. Rebound tipped around, and Howard comes away with it. Now Dominguez with a three, it's no good. Quickly ahead, Dominguez with the steal. Poor outlet pass right there. Had a man ahead of the field. You gotta throw that ball out there. You got someone ahead of the field. Let him run under it. Don't be short of that long outlet pass. Dominguez had to get up off the deck and hustle back and make that play. Now Howard's drive, he is fouled. Terrence Ward has a tough assignment matching up against Howard as long as UMBC stays man to man. A lot of pressure on him. Look at that pass, Terrence Ward, nice bounce pass. Greg Nunn thought he was gonna throw it up in the air, jumped to try to deflect it, but the bounce pass gets through. Martin on the follow-up. Well, Martin, you saw him make the fine play offensively. Defensively, he committed the foul against Stephen Howard. And his free throw is good. Howard with six points in the early going in this game. Our first substitution, you called it. Henry Lelani checks into the game now for St. Francis as Richie Dominguez takes his two fouls to the bench. Ron Daniel can't afford to have Richie Dominguez pick up that third so early in this ball game. Gives Lelani a chance to get his game going off the bench. Now Ward in the corner working on Howard. Gets it back to Wilson. Wilson moves the ball. Martin back out now. Ward the five point guard from Meg Harbor. Now the baseline drive and conversion by Justin Wilson. The kid from Brooklyn with his first two points of the game. Justin Wilson has been NEC Rookie of the Week. Newcomer of the Week twice this season. A strong point guard prospect in this league. Tom Sullivan is very happy with his play this season. Now Santana's drive to Dish to Reyes was blocked, and UMBC comes away with the ball. Looking to build on a two-point lead. Got a long jumper from the right side. Terrence Ward for three. And it's a 12 to 7 lead. Ward heating up now for UMBC. Ward does a great job of moving without the ball. As this game progresses, we'll try to give you a look at it, but he knows how to work his man off of picks and then catch and fire. Reyes trying to work down low on Okafer, but it is knocked away. And we've 
we've got a TV timeout here as we take a look at Terrence Ward from long range bombing for the Retrievers who are in front. Dandruff, psoriasis, scalp dermatitis. If you ask all the dermatologists listed here to recommend a therapeutic shampoo, Neutrogena T-Gel would come out number one. T-Gel works on all three itchy, flaky scalp conditions. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. The fast-paced excitement and energy of the world's fastest-growing game is captured on all three levels of the Basketball Hall of Fame. The Hall brings the history of the game and today's superstars together in one exciting place. Try your free-throw skills at the Spalding Shootout. Go one-on-one -on -one with Bill Walton at the Boston Garden in a virtual reality game. See over 4,000 exhibits and artifacts from all levels of the game, amateur and pro. A great entertainment value at one low admission price. The Basketball Hall of Fame. You'll have a ball. Dandruff, psoriasis, scalp dermatitis. If you ask all the dermatologists listed here to recommend a therapeutic shampoo, Neutrogena T-Gel would come out number one. T-Gel works on all three itchy, flaky scalp conditions. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. Game of the Week is brought to you by Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. And by RCA, changing entertainment again at RCA.com by the Dime Savings Bank of New York. With 127 branches in the greater New York metropolitan area, you belong at the Dime. Back here at the rack in Baltimore. That's Gray is working and getting the first bucket. I was going to ask you, Brad Greenberg, how important was it for St. Francis to get somebody established other than Howard offensively? And Reyes answers the call. Herb Reyes taking advantage of about four inches over Kennedy Okafor. And Tara Ford taking advantage of a big basket. Visually, he is seeing a big hoop and knocking it down. You must make it put on the floor. Eight points for Ward. Let's go to Tim Castro. Yeah, Bill, just listening in on Coach Ganulin's huddle right there. He just told Herbert Reyes, take, take it right at the hoop. They're not doubling down at you. You can go at them all day long. You got a significant size advantage. Back to you, Bill. Lalani with the long three, none with the rebound, and he makes a smart play right there, bouncing it off of Ward. So we'll get a reset here. And Lalani was bombing away, and he has already got a spot on the bench. Gerald Walker getting a chance in that front court spot right now, but. We see Howard aggressively around the hoop. It's real important for Terrence Ward to keep Stephen Howard off the offensive glass. Well, Howard with a distinct uh, size advantage there. Howard only gets four rebounds a game, but I think he's got three or four in the early going here. Now the long three, no good. Rebound the UNBC. Quickly on the attack, the pass denied. Nice denial there by Hayworth Reyes. UMBC will have the ball. Let's take a look at the field goal percentages here early in the early going. St. Francis, uh, they're having a tough time, while UMBC, they're getting the open shots and making the most of them. Well, UMBC has executed very well in their half-court offense. They've freed up Terrence Ward for some catch-and-shoot opportunities beyond the three-point arc, and he has responded. St. Francis will look to get more shots. They usually generate more shots because they run. They get to the offensive glass. They make steals in their press. But they're not making enough right now, and they're trailing. set the loss of Richard Dominguez with the two fouls. Dominguez is the guy that gives them the change of pace. He's a slasher. He'll go to the hoop. Otherwise, they're just a three-point shooting team. Well, against the man-to-man, -man, it's real important to establish her Reyes. It's obviously, Rank Gandler wants to do that. Against the man-to-man, -man, Stephen Howell also has room to penetrate as does Greg Nunn. If UMBC goes zone, then we look for Angel Santana to start launching some threes in the seams of that UMBC zone. You mentioned Hayworth Reyes. 
Kansas. It's going to be interesting to see how he fares against Kennedy Okafor. Okafor probably the most consistent player on this UMBC ball club. He is UMBC's Mr. Double-Double. 30 double-doubles in his career so far at UMBC. He's got a streak of three right now. Is Justin Wilson getting ready to pull the trigger underneath the UMBC basket? It's it out the board. He's going to spread around the three-point circle. Now kicked in to carry Martin. Martin with the turnaround. No good. Rebound pulled down by Brad Martin to put back in a foul. Martin and Martin. It's quite a team. Not quite bad. Act. Not bad. Nice jump hook on that first attempt by Kerry Martin in tight. He got it in close. Moves to the middle. Nice setup right there. Good elevation. Just misses. And Brad Martin doing the dirty work in the paint, able to give his team a second shot. He leads the NEC in field goal percentage, makes 65% of his field goal attempts. That is offensive efficiency. Reyes with the foul as we have some substitution now. Kennedy Okafer, he's going to get a breather. And Andre Williams checks into the ball game. This is an interesting young man to watch play. He is well-built, physical, undersized at that power forward spot, but with that kind of bulk, able to play a lot bigger than 6'5". I guarantee you'll see somebody bouncing up here before the end of the afternoon. St. Francis. Trailing here, 16 to 9. Let me stay right here. St. Francis is trying to put some real pressure on Terrence Ward, make him work defensively, tire him out so his shot won't be quite as sure. They're also trying to free up Angel Santana, but have not been able to shake him loose from Kelly Martin so far. It's Gerald Walker and the steal by Justin Wilson. Walker gets back in a hard foul. Wow. Gerald Walker, 6'7", Justin Williams, six feet tall, Walker with about a 40-pound weight advantage. He really laid the leather on the freshman. Watch him jump out here. Justin Wilson, nice anticipation into the passing lane, able to take it all the way, draw the foul. Walker made sure he wasn't going to get a three-point play out of that one. Justin Wilson said, what am I doing here? I didn't buy a ticket for this thing. But he's a city guard, Bill. He's used to getting knocked down. If you take him to the hoop and you're a city player, you're used to some contact. And I'm sure he's been fouled hard like that many times, whether it's on the court in a real game or just making sure he stayed on the floor. It's a pickup ball. Well, check him for some of those uh, fence marks on his shoulders there as he makes the second free throw. It is now 17 to 9 lead for UMBC. Three points in the game for Justin Wilson. St. Francis trying to free up Angel Santana, giving him some picks along the baseline, but he's unable to get loose and carry Martin. Martin trailing him around those picks very well. Martin, the best defender by far on this UMBC team. The trap right there and the foul. Justin Wilson active defensively, looking to help out. Strip the ball from Stephen Howard. Gets caught for reaching in. Terrence Ward did a nice job containing the dribble at that time, which enabled Wilson to get a read and attempt to make that steal. Well, Wilson will have a seat in the freshman Kareem Washington in, and with the easy bucket, the easy lay in, Henry Lalani. Lalani set the pick for Angel Santana. There was a switch, and Lalani was able to just step to the basket. Foul right in front of us, Greg Nunn. Applying a little pressure there, uh, maybe some ill-advised pressure on the freshman guard, Kareem Washington. Twelve minutes, 52 seconds to play here in the first half from the Rack Arena in Baltimore, Maryland on the NEC Game of the Week. Terrence Ward looking for more. Now passed to nowhere and picked off by Angel Santana. None with the drive, double teamed, and a whistle. They're double teaming the ball. Terrence Ward with the foul, his first personal. They'll allow him to do just about anything they want outside that three-point arc, but once they come inside, you're going to get some contact. 
Tom Sullivan mentioned to me yesterday that he is most concerned with the penetrating ability of St. Francis's perimeter players. There we see a perfect example. Stephen Howard just taking his man off the dribble. Kareem Washington unable to keep him in front. Howard drawing the foul. Kareem Washington saying, hey, this guy's a jump shooter. What's he doing putting the ball on the floor? He's got some one-on-one -on -one ability there. He makes a nice change of direction dribble on Washington. Started moving to his right. Has the ability to reverse dribble. Ends up driving towards his left. Good use of the dribble to move a man and change direction to free yourself up. Two seasons at Jefferson Community College, Stephen Howard scored 1,566 points. Prolific. He's got nine in this game. Pass in the jam to Kerry Martin. Who says he just plays defense? Kerry Martin can definitely play above the rim, whether it's a shot block or this chance, a flush on in Oak Crest High School in Mays Landing, and now the strip by the kid from Oak Harbor. Terrence Ward quickly to the front court, pulls up his jumper, is no good. And quickly, St. Francis coming back the other way in transition. None looking for the hole. Triple team gets it to Elbert, now down low. Lalane on the baseline, and the whistle. Milani trying to snake along the baseline, figure out a way to get a shot up off the pass from Ilver. Unable to shoot. He's appealing for a couple of free throws, but he did draw the foul. Well, we've got a timeout on the floor, but we take you out with a big slam-bam jam from Carrie Martin on the NEC Game of the Week. Northlands, home of the largest miniature railway on earth, plus doll museum, 94-room dollhouse, and theater pipe organ. This is just a small part of what you'll see here at Northlands. Northlands, Flemington, New Jersey. You've got to see it to believe it. Homeowners, call Garden State Brick Bay's windows and exteriors and get a new house without having to move or spend a fortune. That's right. You can give your home a new look and feel any look you desire. And it just takes one phone call. For years, we've been beautifying thousands of area homes, making them more energy efficient while increasing their value. Brick, stucco, stone, siding, and windows. Quality craftsmanship, most work done within a week. All maintenance-free and fully guaranteed. Let us help you design the perfect look for your home. Call Garden State Brick Face Windows and Exteriors. To find out if our unique products are right for you, call now for a free telephone consultation. It just takes a few minutes. There's absolutely no obligation. 100% financing available. So why wait when a simple call can get you a great new house without spending a fortune? Call 1-800-238-1400 and ask about our current special discounts. Shop from home with our exclusive free telephone consultation. Call 1-800-238-1400. Northlands, home of the largest miniature railway on earth, plus doll museum, 94-room dollhouse, and theater pipe organ. This is just a small part of what you'll see here at Northlands. Northlands, Flemington, New Jersey. You've got to see it to believe it. It's a dog day afternoon on the NEC Game of the Week. You got Terriers going against Retrievers right now. It's the Retrievers getting the better of it. The defense on Angel Santana. Santana is fouled. Santana says, I gotta get a shot up. I'm a shooter. I'm the leading scorer in this conference. I want to get some shots up. And Kerry Martin is wearing him like a sweater right now. A blanket. He's just all over him. Martin getting the foul on that play. Actually, Santana is the number two scorer in the conference, averaging 17 points a game. But this tough man-to-man -man defense has marked him so far early in his first half. That time. Unusual to see Angel Santana put it on the floor and try to drive it, but he was forced to do that to try to get something going offensively. We're approaching the midpoint of the first half, Brad, and uh, Angel Santana averaging 17 a game. That's just his first point. Now his second point in this contest. St. Francis continuing to uh, use that bench. Ron Ganulin going to it very liberally. Corey Underwood now checks in the game. 6'9", sophomore from East Elmhurst, New York. 
Ron's already played 10 players here in the first eight and a half minutes of this half. Unusual to see that many guys in the rotation early for the Terriers. Got to be a domino effect of Richie Dominguez going out because, again, they're being forced to do some things that maybe they don't like to do offensively. And he's probably not too happy with the defensive effort either. And figures let's give some other guys a shot. But talking about shots, Terrence Ward has got it going today. And his fourth field goal. With 10 points now, uh, uh, Steve Howard has been lighting it up. He has 11 with that nice little turnaround jumper. Craving the contact on that play, you see. And Stephen Howard is a physical guard. Able to create off the dribble and not afraid to launch a three ball every once in a while also. But definitely one of the stronger, tougher two guard matchups in the NEC. Kareem Washington with a bad pass. He's coming out of the game, but Justin Wilson, well, he's had his rest now and he's ready to resume his activities at the point. Meanwhile, Terrence Ward is just running Jamel Smiley all over the place right now. Henry Lalani asleep defensively. QNBC able to just enter it in and score, but he's not asleep offensively, Bill. That's in that three ball off the catch. Okafor working him down low, and Lalane says, this is what I like to do. Now the pass to Martin, drives that baseline, and we get the ball away. Jamel Smiley, quick hands on defense, taking away the baseline from Martin, able to knock the ball away. Take a look at the uh, results from the three-point line today and the results coming into the game. As Okafor works it down low and gets the easy bucket. Both of these teams have perimeter shooters, but St. Francis will launch 25 threes most games, and Angel Santana lets fly about 10 a game. So we'll keep an eye on that as the game progresses. Well, you have the whistle, but you know that Henry Lalane was thinking about pulling the trigger from out there. Herbie Reyes checking back into the game, and Fred Ilver will have a seat. Both coaches have brought their benches to life today. Have each played 10 players so far? Trying to find the right combinations here in the first half. Olani well, missed on the long bomb, but it was Howard pulling it down. Now Howard with a nice pass. Now low to Reyes, but gets it back to Howard in the lay-in. UNBC goes zone that possession. Howard able to just cut through the lane, catch and finish. He's got 13 points. And X and Wall Okafer with the bucket on the drive, and he was fouled. Herb Reyes in the back of the press. Just doesn't have the quickness. Now here we see Herb at the other end. Nice feed inside to Steve Howard. And the quick comeback. Here, Justin Wilson able to dish off to Okafer, and Reyes just not quick enough to go back and recover and make a play. That's the problem for Herb Reyes. When he plays quicker teams, especially a team like UNBC that doesn't put a big one on the floor most of the time, Okafer at 6'7", really a power forward. Sometimes Reyes has trouble making the defensive plays against the quick people. And that was Reyes' second personal, so he could also be in trouble. Uh, Howard Huffman trying to create, yeah. throws a pass inside, it's off the hands of Corey Underwood. Tough decision by Howard trying to rifle that bullet pass in the middle of the zone. Has to be a little more selective when you're trying to enter the ball into the middle against the 2-3 zone. Reyes to the bench and Marcel Dimbang gets his first action of the game. Dimbang from Cameroon. He's 6'7", 235, a senior. Speaks four languages. Let's see if he can say defense here. And we've got a foul away from the ball. Looks like uh, Brett Kindleman, the 6'10 sophomore from Huntington, New York, committing the foul. Put a block off the ball and try to free up a teammate. He gets caught. Kindleman, the biggest player on UMBC, will get some time out there. Most of the game, when Reyes is on the floor, a little surprise right now to see him out on the court with some quicker St. Francis players. It's a tough matchup for Brett Kindleman. 
Jamel Smiley, a 63% shooter from the line. 9.07 to go. St. Francis trying to make it a three-point game now. 27-23. That's the way it's going to stay for the moment as Okafor pulls down the rebound. Justin Wilson working on Smiley. Now this is Kinderman. And his pass is knocked away and will remain with UMBC. Stephen Howe aggressive into the passing lanes, wants to keep the ball away from Terrence Ward. Look to see Ward back cut. Try to loosen up some of that defensive pressure. Well, Ward we'll sees him pull it back out. That's Sam Graham. Boy, he gave a big elbow to the chops of Henry Lalani, but nobody called it. Long three, no good. A rebound pulled down by Smiley. Ball knocked away. We'll stay with St. Francis. Tim Capstraw, he's over there by that UMBC bench. What do you got, Tim? Yeah, Bill, despite UMBC's success in 27 points so far, they do not want this game to go up and down. Tempo is a huge issue. They need to keep this game in the 60s to have some success. Back to you, Bill. Nimbang pulls down the rebound and gets the put back in his first two points of the game. Kennedy Oakford has got to clean up that defensive board. UMBC cannot win if they give up second and third shots to St. Francis today. Oakford with traffic in the lane. Nice jump shot right there to make it 29-25. UMBC. Lilani can't hit. Here come the retrievers. Three on two. Oakford can't get it to fall. Good job by Kennedy Okafor of running the floor, Bill. Terrence Ward seeing the big man motor down the floor, made sure he could give it up and reward him. Look at that big guy move. Puts too much pressure right there on the defense. Smiley reaching in. Gets called for the foul, but Kennedy Okafor at six foot seven, 250 pounds, can definitely run up and down the floor. That is such a great asset for a big man. And the point guard rewarding that big man's hustle right there. More substitutions for UMBC. Now, early this year, their head coach, Tom Sullivan, he was only going 60. That's grown to nine. And in this game, everybody's been in, and Kerry Martin is back in the ballgame. Well, if you want to have a deep team, you've got to play a deep team. You've got to give guys opportunities to get out there and play and grow and the referee says first and ten st francis as we take a 30 second timeout jamel smiley from west hempstead running the offense right now for the st francis terriers yes to learn more about the northeast conference visit our website at www.northeastconference.org the nec on the net UNBC shooting very well so far, 11 for 17 from the field. That's why they have this four-point lead. They've made two three-pointers. But UNBC today, look at that, 63% from the field. Tough to beat a team when they're knocking down six out of 10 shots, and they've got some range on a few of those. Terrence Ward with a pair of three balls so far. Even tougher when you're holding your opponents to 41.3% from the field, but right now, St. Francis over that mark, but still down four in this game, coming up on the seven and a half minute mark here in the first half. Here we see the 2-3 zone. Very important to make sure they don't allow Angel Santana and he open threes. Howard trying to be the zone break. He can't get a great rebound by Jim Bay. Gets back to Howard. He can't find the mark. It comes away with another rebound. Good action in there. Good action. Aggressive play. Trying to take it to the hoop. Once again, UMBC has got to keep St. Francis yeah. off the offensive glass. They've done a good job defending the first shot. They've got to keep him off to prevent any second shot. Angel Santana can't hit the mark, but Howard, he's a rebounding machine. He's got six in this game. And Kennedy Okafor getting it done down low as the Retrievers in front by four on the NEC Game of the Week. Day 82. Coldest day yet. Even the dogs won't move. Still no radio contact and supplies are running low. 
Uh, I brought you some cookies and some nice hot cocoa. Bye-bye, dear. There are a few things you can always count on. The Go Anywhere Jeep Cherokee is just one of them. Now lease Cherokee Sport for zero down, $269 a month, and $764 due at signing. And get all this at no extra charge. Presenting the new Italian Originals Meets a Trio from Domino's. Tender prosciutto. Italian sausage. Tender prosciutto. Spicy pepperoni. New Meets a Trio. $10.99, $10.99, New Domino's Italian Originals Meets a Trio. Prosciutto ham, Italian sausage, and spicy pepperoni. So much amore delivered hot for only $10.99. New Meets a Trio. The 2000 Northeast Conference Basketball Tournament is coming to Trenton, New Jersey. Catch Division I College Hoops on March 3rd, 4th, and 6th at the brand new Sovereign Bank Arena. Don't miss your chance to see March Madness NEC style in a pressure-packed environment with an NCAA tournament berth at stake for both the men and women. To order tickets, contact your local NEC Athletic Department or call Ticketmaster at 609-520-8383. The road to the 2000 NCAA Tournament begins in Trenton. Be a part of it. 29-25, 7-0-8 to play. Tim Capstraw, our sideline reporter. Yeah, Bill, sneaking in Coach Sullivan's huddle right there. He talked a lot about press offense right here. Saying the Terriers can make you crazy with this full court pressure. He also said, hey, when we get it to the other side, let's get the ball in the lane. Back to you, Bill. Now the pass in the lane to Justin Wilson. He thinks better of it. Gets it back to Kerry Martin. Mr. Underwood, Corey Underwood, defensively, Martin drives and blocked down low. Coming over is Marcel Dimbang, but he's also going to be called for the foul. Real nice, strong, right-handed drive with strong hand. Kerry Martin going hard, beating a couple of St. Francis defenders. Good offensive execution right there by St. Francis. They go out with two freshman guards, but they stayed poised, organized, and created a chance for Kerry Martin to go hard to his right hand. Well, it was watching that replay. It didn't look like uh, Dimbang uh, got body, but apparently the official said he did because he certainly got all ball up top. As Martin converts the free throws, it's a six-point game. He's got four points. Stephen Howard, I've been talking about his rebounding work. He's got six boards in this game, all on the offensive board for St. Francis. Now, Miller with the long pass to Howard as they reverse it. Kick down in the corner. Santana's jumper is good. Santana salivating at the side of a 2-3 zone. Gets a chance to figure the scene and knocks it down. It's Justin Wilson with the drive, and it's no good. Dimbang with the rebound. You talk about salivating. That's what dogs do, don't they? <laughs> Let's see if Angus Santana can shake free for a few more looks before this half is over. Wilson with the steal. He gets it to Sam Grantham, who got that shoulder in there. So they're going to say that ball's going back the other way. Sam Grantham. 6'7 freshman from Wincote, Pennsylvania. Now, what baseball Hall of Famers from Wincote? Shelton Ham's finest, Reggie Jackson. You fed me that one earlier. Right, I got it. Up, huh, Brad? <laughs> 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 Mr. October. Well, there are other people in that town that can play these games, and Sam Granham is one of them. Although, we'll right there, he picks up his first foul. I think Gregna did a nice acting job on that one. Granham may have had the lead into the lane, but none got his body in there and flopped a little bit. Drew the foul. St. Francis offense being pushed way out now as Santana contact with no foul. The kick back out, two-man game with Howard. Santana can't get it to fall. Underwood with an offensive board, and we've got a whistle. Wilson under the hoop, battling Underwood, reaching in, drawing the foul, but you see where Angel Santana wants to get those three balls up against this zone. Had trouble shaking free from Kerry Martin when UMBC went, man, sees the zone and says, I gotta get some shots up. Justin Wilson with his second personal foul. Corey Underwood, 75% free throw shooter. 
Doesn't get the roll there on the front end of the one and one. UMBC's Andre Williams with the rebound. Now Wilson trying to change speeds on none. One of the best defensive guards in this league. There's Williams to Ward. Terrence pulls it back out. Haven't had a, a shot clock run down quite yet in this game. This one down to 10, but Ward puts it up. Almost got the bounce. Got bounced pretty good by Dimbang. Now Howard coming back the other way looking for help. Santana, the trailer, no good. Tipped around, and loose ball comes back to Howard. Puts it back up and in. Stephen Howard just hanging around, cleaning up the garbage, has 15 points in this game. He's been so aggressive in the paint, sticking his nose into the traffic, able to come up with a number of loose balls up the lane, some cuts down the lane, having a terrific first half. More importantly, it's a one-point game. Wilson looks for the open man. I would. Even more impressive what Howard is doing is the fact he's also guarding Terrence Ward. So he is working hard at both ends of the floor, as is Andre Williams, with a big body of his able to draw the foul inside. Well, UMBC getting a big break there as their defense is really bogged down. St. Francis had him pretty much covered, but the foul was nonetheless called on Marcel Dimbang. That is his second personal here in the first half. Looking at Andre Williams, Marcel Dimbang. It looked like we have a Mr. America contest. Two big, strong guys battling each other around the hoop. Well, I know everybody back in Queens, New York is watching this one. Andre from Queens from St. Mary High School. He's an 83% free throw shooter. Every time I say you're, you're that, you're the jinx. Every time you say that. that. Is that the deal? Wait till after he shoots it. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm talking too loud. Not exactly. <laughs> Underwood. Santana, if he's going to take that thing, the way this defense is responding or reacting to him, he's got to get it up right away like that. Didn't get a good look, though. Wow, well, Sam Branham, long arms, trying to contest that shot. Pop Sullivan is very excited about the potential of Sam Branham. Thinks he's going to just get stronger and stronger, working hard in the weight room, but he is long and active. Real good small point for the team. Oh, he just pulled down two big rebounds, and the shot was no good. And now UMBC loses it out of bounds. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 32-33, 16 left to play in the first half. Retrievers in front. Dandruff, psoriasis, scalp dermatitis. If you ask all the dermatologists listed here to recommend a therapeutic shampoo, Neutrogena T-Gel would come out number one. T-Gel works on all three itchy, flaky scalp conditions. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. Seize the opportunity at Fairleigh Dickinson University, a leading private university with more than 100 degree programs. FDU has two campuses in northern New Jersey, each with its own distinctive resources and environment. FDU is building on a tradition of excellence, boldly investing in facilities and technology, and establishing innovative programs. We're giving our students the tools to make their dreams come true. Dandruff, psoriasis, scalp dermatitis. If you ask all the dermatologists listed here to recommend a therapeutic shampoo, Neutrogena T-Gel would come out number one. T-Gel works on all three itchy, flaky scalp conditions. Neutrogena T-Gel, it works. With the lead here with 316 to go. A tough year though for the retrievers, especially when you look at what they were doing last year, Brad Greenberg. And three very important kids, Rich Giddens, Nick Greller, and Tim Hyland, not with the team this year. Giddens leaving for a personal reason, should be back next season. Grella just didn't like playing hoops anymore. Tim Hyland, though, they could use him. Our right, Jim Rat, Tim Capstro, what do you got? sitting in the huddle on Coach Gando and he's drawn up a set play here. If the baseline forward of UMBC gets sucked out, they want to sneak in and play some different defense. But as you see right now, they decoyed the 2-3 zone and now we're playing man-to-man. -man. Back to you, Bill. Well, Santana and guys like Kurt Ilver who like to shoot that three ball, they could really take advantage of this. Ilver trying to set the screen for none, unsuccessful in doing it. 
fighting their way through the screen, what I believe was Wilson, and he gets called for the foul. Greg Nunn going to his right, a strong left-hander, but in that case, saw an opening against Wilson, took it hard to his right, and drew the foul. I stand corrected. That's Terrence Ward with the personal foul. Well, you're correct, it was Justin Wilson, his third. So he does have extreme foul trouble. Now we'll get a chance to see Kareem Washington in a slashing point guard. He's Mr. Basketball in Westchester County last year. This is an interesting backcourt right now for UMBC. Terrence Ward will have more ball handling responsibility. And Washington has a good, strong body at the two guard. Let's see if he can shake free for some offensive scoring shots. But it's Ward's job to run the team right now against this pressure from St. Francis. And with none on him, his job is not going to be easy. You can see none right in his face. Good defense by St. Francis. UMBC staying poised and patient. Shot clock down to seven. One, three ball. No good. Rebound, though, is run down by Kerry Martin. St. Francis has done an outstanding job defensively after a quick start by UMBC that's got him back in this ballgame. Now Washington down low. Williams can't get it to fall. The rebound, Santana, and here comes St. Francis with two minutes to play in the first half. Three ball, no good. Another rebound for Howard, but his shot was rejected. Rejected by Sam Granham. The eighth rebound for Stephen Howard here in the first half to go along with 15 points. He's almost got a double-double already. And all of those rebounds, by the way, at the offensive end. Now the spin move, Martin can't get it, but Williams follows. He can't get it to fall, and Santana has a rebound. Andre Williams, two close-in shots the last two possessions, unable to finish, but good work to get three around the hoop. Santana spotting up. He just cannot find the range on that three-pointer this afternoon. Well, you've got to give Kerry Martin a lot of credit. His man-to-man -man defense in the first 10 minutes of this ball game took Angel Santana out of his offensive rhythm, and he's yet to get back into a flow with a good feel for launching those three balls. Santana one for eight from the field. See if UNBC can get Terrence Ward free from their half-court offense. They look to set a lot of picks for him along the baseline. And here they set two to get him free. Washington, though, trying to drive right. Good see. Well, they give the ball back to Terrence Ward. Shot clock down to five. Ward driving on none. And we've got a foul. Terrence Ward has to create one-on-one -on -one with that shot clock winding down. Able to draw a foul. And then Terrence Ward and Greg Nunn getting a little muscle tussle on the baseline. Oh, toughest tombstay, huh? Getting a little testy there, fellas. Two little point, point guards. They probably huh? haven't been in too many fights, though. Those yeah, big guys. Little guys like that. When they bark at each other, they probably fought a little bit. But those point guards, they usually just try to figure it out with a little discussion. Ron Gandulin getting his team in deeper foul trouble, so he's going to run for it over out there first chance he gets. Ron Gandulin, his ninth year at St. Francis. Terrific coach. He's been an NEC Coach of the Year. Tommy Sullivan, last year's NEC Coach of the Year after being the Big South Coach of the Year two seasons ago. These two guys do an outstanding job. Teams play very well at the offensive end. Different styles, but they both execute well. Very good defensive team. Smiley and Cliff Ilver check back into the ball game as the free throws are good. We are inside a minute here in this first half. 12 points for Terrence Ward, by the way. He's lighting it up here. Now Santana driving. Nice touch. We can't get it to fall. Martin pulls down the rebound and says, point guard, kill some of that clock. Martin doing an outstanding job, and we see once again the defensive pressure of UMBC forcing Angel Santana into a bad shot. 
He's having a horror show of a first half. Well, he's trying to carry the offense right now, and unfortunately his shoulders aren't big enough for it at this particular moment. That can always change, though. Shot clock running down to five. Ward puts it on the floor, one second left. He did not beat it, a shot clock violation. Good defense by St. Francis. Terrence Ward trying to shake free, bobbled it for a second, then tried a little step back move, and then an up and under move. He was throwing all the moves at St. Francis, but not within 35 seconds. Good defense right there by the Terriers. Low turnovers in this game, total of nine here in the first half. Four for Sullivan as we get to the buzzer and the shot is no good. So at the half, we've got a three-point ball game. The St. Francis Terriers, their seven-game winning streak, mm, in a bit of jeopardy right now. They're down 34 to 31. This is the NEC Game of the Week. Tim Capstro, our sideline reporter. He's standing by with head coach Tom Sullivan. Yeah, Saul, I got to ask you one quick thing. I'm not used to seeing so many players coming off the bench this year. You look like the team of old. Well, I think we have to do that to keep up with them. They're so deep. We have to make sure we can keep the energy up. One question, you're playing a lot of zone defense against a tremendous three-point shooting team. Is Santana making him, making you nervous every time he puts it up? Well, we got a few numbers out there. You know, 24 and 13, we got to make sure we're close to them. If we can get a hand in their face, we feel comfortable. The one thing we don't want to do is give them a second shot. Thank you very much, Saul. Back to you, Bill. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tim Capstra. It is a 34-31 lead for UMBC to dog her out on the game of the week. Northland, home of the largest miniature railway on earth, plus doll museum, 94-room dollhouse, and theater pipe organ. This is just a small part of what you'll see here at Northland. Northland, Flemington, New Jersey. You've got to see it to believe it. There is an easier way to find a job. The NEC, together with JobTrack.com, bring you the largest job listing website, exclusively for students and alumni. It's where over 400,000 businesses have come looking for talents just like yours. The NEC and JobTrack.com, the fastest track between school and work. Check it out at your school's career center. What? Hmm, Dean's List. When you choose a university, you're choosing an academic and cultural environment. That's why you should choose Monmouth, an ideally sized private teaching university of undergraduate and graduate degree programs where faculty are focused on your education. A friendly community just a mile from the beach, an attractive campus with state-of-the-art facilities. Monmouth, the number one choice of more and more students. Monmouth University, academics, location, growth, and affordability. Monmouth, the choice for you. Can you walk like a penguin? University of Maryland, Baltimore County is the total package. UMBC is ideally located just off I-95 in suburban Baltimore, 10 miles from downtown. UMBC is large enough to provide excellent training and research opportunities, yet small enough for close faculty-student intervention. From visible President Freeman Urbowski to a diverse student population to supportive alumni, there are people at UMBC who make things happen. UMBC is clearly a campus on the move. Northland, home of the largest miniature railway on earth, plus doll museum, 94-room dollhouse, and theater pipe organ. This is just a small part of what you'll see here at Northland. Northland, Flemington, New Jersey. You've got to see it to believe it. The game of the week, 34-31, UMBC leads St. Francis. Time for our weekly halftime feature, Holding Court with Tim Capstraw. Tim Capstraw here holding court with two of the NEC's premier point guards and New York City natives, Justin Wilson of UMBC and Greg Nunn of St. Francis, New York. And Justin, I gotta start with you. You guys are from New York. 
how come so many great point guards come from New York City? I don't know. I guess it's the uh, playgrounds. Everybody learned uh, you know, play in, against good competition. So. How about uh, how about some pretty good coaching out there? Coach Jack Kern and Archbishop Malloy, that ain't too shabby. Oh, yeah, I had a great coach in high school, and uh, it's, it's better like that. And, St. Raymond's and Rice. And, and I don't really know your high school coach, but you had a great coach in Gary Charles with the Long, uh, Long Island Panthers out in the AAU ball, right? Yes, very good. These NBA guys that uh, are from New York City, can you name a few point guards uh, from New York? Uh, Stephon Marbury, Mark Jackson, Kenny Anderson, Rod Strickland. That was way too easy. <laughs> you just nailed that. That was way too easy. Justin, last year you were recruited by a number of schools. Number of schools. You were a big time recruit out of New York. How come you chose UMBC? Well, I kind of like the uh, atmosphere here. I like the players. I definitely got along with Coach Sullivan, so I think that's what made, it, made my choice easy. How about in the NEC right here, head-to-head, -head, point guard to point guard, who are some of your toughest matchups? Uh, definitely Gene Neighbors from uh, Robert Morris and uh, Jamal Raglan from St. Francis PA. Right. Hey, you know, before a big game like this today, I like to get pumped up listening to my favorite rapper. You know who he is? Jay-Z. You like Jay-Z? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. What, what songs do you like to hit? Uh, do It Again. Uh, yeah, and I love that one. <laughs> Fabulous. Fabulous. Good stuff, huh? Hey, they've been asking for it. they got to have it again. Let's get that impression of Coach Ganyon at halftime. Greg, you tell your buddy Tim Capshaw, if you do that impression of me one more time, you're on a bench for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tim Capshaw and courts adjourned. Gotta love that Greg Nunn. Yes, indeed. It's a three-point game. We're at halftime on the NEC Game of the Week. Wish you had a car that wasn't just another car? Wish it could be tight and precise and fun? And roomy and quiet? Wish it didn't take all your money to get your wish? Dodge Stratus. You make the wish. We make the car. Get 0.9 financing for 60 months or 12.50 cash allowance on Dodge Stratus. their time, their energy, and their talent in our future. But when it comes to their future, people in education turn to TIAA-CREF. For over 80 years, we've provided financial solutions to some of the best minds in America. Now everyone can take advantage of our investment expertise with mutual funds. TIAA-CREF, ensuring the future for those who shape it. Homeowners, call Garden State Brick Base Windows and Exteriors and get a new house without having to move or spend a fortune. That's right. You can give your home a new look and feel any look you desire. And it just takes one phone call. For years, we've been beautifying thousands of area homes, making them more energy efficient while increasing their value. Brick, stucco, stone, siding, and windows. Quality craftsmanship, most work done within a week. All maintenance-free and fully guaranteed. Let us help you design the perfect look for your home. Call Garden State Brick Base Windows and Exteriors. To find out if our unique products are right for you, call now for a free telephone consultation. It just takes a few minutes. There's absolutely no obligation. 100% financing available. So why wait when a simple call can get you a great new house without spending a fortune? Call 1-800-238-1400 and ask about our current special discounts. Shop from home with our exclusive free telephone consultation. Call 1-800-238-1400. RCA Victor. Do not try to adjust the picture. There is nothing wrong with your TV. A new form of television is here. High, High definition. Up to six times sharper than current analog technology. The people who brought you TV, the color TV, and digital satellite TV welcome you to HD TV. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television. We've just made a better one. Halftime, Retrievers 31, 34, Terriers 31. Hey, I'm looking.
looking for players of the week and more in this week's NEC Notebook. The player of the week is in the house. First time honors for the Terriers, Richie Dominguez, the sharp shooting native of Columbia, averaged over 26 points on 54% shooting in home and home wins over Wagner. In last Monday's victory, Dominguez scored a career high 29 points. We've seen this rookie of the week before. He's LIU guard Antoine Doby. It's this Blackbird's third selection of the year. Doby boosting LIU back into playoff contention, averaging 11 points, six assists, and three steals in victories against Sacred Heart and Wagner. The women's player of the week is Wagner's Nia Ryan with 40 points and 25 boards and wins against Central Connecticut and LIU. LIU remained in the women's rookie spotlight with Kim McMillan's fifth selection of the season, the seventh straight for the team. With the standings, the CCSU men go for their 15th straight win tonight with Brooklyn St. Francis riding a seven-game run. And while LIU won three games this week, the Blackbirds and Seahawks still chasing the Mountaineers for the eighth and final playoff spot. With the women's race, Wagner, Monmouth, Sacred Heart, and FDU all gain ground on pace setters Mount St. Mary and St. Francis. While Robert Morris, LIU, and Central Connecticut all close in on clinching a spot in the conference tournament. Later tonight, in Hackensack, FDU tries to avenge an overtime loss to CCSU while Wagner makes a key visit to Moon Township, Pennsylvania. And playoff races get hotter with big games this week on Tuesday. We're back in Brooklyn with bonus coverage on Monday night when Richie Dominguez and St. Francis host the Sacred Heart Pioneers on MSG. Thursday, Paul Dottino and Tim Capstro from Wagner College with our Internet Game of the Week. Playoff excitement is building, so get your tickets now for the NEC Championship Tournament March 3rd, 4th, and 6th at Sovereign Bank Arena. That's this week's NEC Notebook. At the half, the UMBC Retrievers lead St. Francis 34-31. Second half action coming up. Hey, sports fans, listen up. Is your family looking for the coolest thing to do? Then take them to see New Jersey Red Dogs Arena Football. It's a football frenzy with high-scoring killer hits. And a kid's season pass is just $19. That's the best family bargain in town. So if you're tired of the same old thing, we have just one question. Has your family gone to the Dogs New Jersey Red Dogs Arena Football? Call 888-RED-DOGS today. Quinnipiac College in Hamden, Connecticut, providing the highest quality education in business, health, communication, education, and law. Quinnipiac College Athletics features 18 NCAA Division I sports for men and women. Our student athletes are challenged by world-class competition in the prestigious Northeast Conference. And our outstanding intramural and recreation programs serve the majority of our 6,000 students. Quinnipiac College, preparing today's student athletes to become tomorrow's leaders. Nine. Nine. In 1939, RCA introduced television to the public at the World's Fair. Color came to television in 1954 with RCA's Fair. Digital satellite TV became a fair. The future of television is high definition, six times sharper. The people who brought you the television now bring you the next generation, making television as exciting as it was. Yes! The very first time. RCA, changing entertainment again. Tony Gliozo, sales rep with McNeil Consumer Products, rolls out this year's big seller. Robert Morris College, everything you need to prepare yourself for whatever comes next. Tracy Thompson, a consultant with Oracle Corporation, shows what you can get out of a top specialty business school. <laughs> Robert Morris College, everything you need to prepare yourself for whatever comes next. The fast-paced excitement and energy of the world's fastest-growing game is captured on all three levels of the Basketball Hall of Fame. The Hall brings the history of the game and today's superstars together in one exciting place. Try your free throw skills at the Spalding Shootout. Go one-on-one -on -one with Bill Walton at the Boston Garden in a virtual reality game. See over 4,000 exhibits and artifacts from all levels of the game, amateur and pro. A great entertainment value at one low admission price. The Basketball Hall of Fame. You'll have a ball. UMBC leads this one by three points at the half on the NEC Game of the Week. Bill Daughtry and Brad Green Greenberg with the play-by-play -play coverage. And Tim Capstro, he's our sideline reporter today. Take a look at the game summary this afternoon, Brad. You take a look right at the top line. Angel Santana having a rough game this afternoon. Only one of nine from the field, one of nine from three-point range. 
Mitchie Dominguez is also having a rough game. Picks up two fouls, has yet to crack scoring, and they are really struggling from the field, but they're still in the ballgame. Tim Capstra standing by with the head coach of St. Francis, Ron Ganulin. Yes, Ron, you got a ton of offensive weapons, but only Stephen Howard scoring tonight. Yeah, we're, we're not shooting the ball well. You know, we're we're uh, we're off, but we're going to keep throwing them up. We, we throw threes up, and that's our game plan. I told Angel Santana that the shots didn't go in the first half, but keep shooting them. They'll go in the second. The, uh, Terrence Ward now, you've been very physical with him, and he still gets 12 points. Yeah, he's a terrific player. It's very tough. He, they run him uh, around the court off many screens, and, y y you know, it takes a lot of mental as well as physical uh, uh, concentration to guard him. So uh, he's a tough uh, player, and uh, we'll just keep after him in the second half. Thanks a lot, Ron. Back to you, Bill. Thanks, guys. As we take a look at the first half highlights here, and it's been a two-man show, Ward, for UMBC. Terrence Ward, when he gets free and has a second to let it fly, very tough to guard, and here he shows his ability to put it on the floor and attack the rim at the other end. Stephen Howard knocking down threes and being very physical in the paint. This time posting up Terrence Ward and knocking it down from inside with the turnaround. Howard also climbing with eight offensive rebounds in this game. Take a look at the leading scorers in this game. It is uh, Howard with a game-high 15 for St. Francis and Terrence Ward leading UMBC with 12. Bill, it's real important for UMBC to establish Kennedy Okafor inside. He had nine points in the first half, but only took five shots, was four for five from the field. They have got to go inside to Kennedy Okafor and put some pressure on the Terriers around the paint. This is a key point in the game, I think, for St. Francis also, because now you've got to watch out for Richard Dominguez coming out being up. too aggressive and picking up that third foul, because right now, offensively, the scoring very imbalanced for St. Francis. Howard with 15, nobody else with more than five. Uh, Richard Dominguez is a junior, so you've got to hope that his maturity, his experience, will enable him to play intelligently, but now we see him rolling on the floor. May have taken an inadvertent elbow. Take another look. He picked up. Reaching Foul around, three, trying right to come there. around, and then he gets popped by Isaac Green. Well, Richie now in that foul trouble we were talking about even deeper. Trying to help out there, but Okafor says, oh, I have nothing of that. He sets the basket. Now Dominguez driving the other end. Layup no good. Batting around. Rebound pulled back by Reyes. Herbie working no backs on Kennedy Okafor. And boy, did he come down with a big hand on him. Okafor alert and active. The first two possessions scores inside at his end and then defensively reaches in to deflect Reyes' attempt around the hoop. Good start right here in the second half for Kennedy Okafor. Howard with the jumper, no good. Loose ball, battle for Richie Dominguez is in the neighborhood. Is he going to get his fourth right here? No, no foul. It's just retriever ball. The St. Francis fans say, Ron Gagnon has no choice but to stay with Richie Dominguez. He's got to get some minutes out of him. Hope he gets into the rhythm of the game offensively without picking up that fourth foul. Well, they have to do it from outside, which is very much the MO of the team, but that's where Dominguez is so strong because he is a penetrator, a slasher, and can do all things. Now trying to penetrate and get the job done is Isaac Green. Isaac Green putting it on the floor, going left, pulls up, isn't sure what to do because no one's checking me. I can make this 15-footer. Howard pops out. He's got 15, looking for more. Now kicks it to Santana. His jumper no good. Rebound by Reyes. He puts it back. Nice little hesitation move for the two points. Reyes with four in the game. He called it, Bill. Just the ability to gather himself. Pause for a second. A little pump fake. Able to put the defense in the freezer. And he's able to finish it off. Now down low. Green kicks it back out, and it's back up top now for the Retrievers. Got a five-point lead. We're just underway here in the second half at Rack Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. 
Shot clock now down to five. Pass down low. The turnaround jumper in and out. Rebound pulled down by Reyes. Brad Martin couldn't get that shot to fall. And then finds how. 